Hey everyone, Check here, and this is my first KSP video. Uh, what made me want to make this video is this awesome new mod that I found uh, just within the past few days called KOS, uh, Scriptable Autopilot System. If you haven't heard of it, uh, you can check out the links in the description. But basically it's a mod that allows you to program various commands for KSP using a relatively straightforward scripting language. Uh, this mod is still in very early de development, but even with the limited commands that it allows for, uh, you can still do a heck of a lot. And I think the uh, potential for this mod is huge. Um, it adds a whole new level of realism and challenge to KSP. And I think uh, players who have been, been playing the game for a while especially will uh, really like this mod. Um, so I'm just going to go over uh, what I'm going to do and we'll just launch the rocket after that. Uh, so basically what I have here is a rocket with a rover sky crane as a payload and what I'd like to do is launch it on a suborbital trajectory. Uh, it'll get up to about 110 kilometers and then re-enter Kerbin's atmosphere and then the rover sky crane will come down kind of like the Curiosity rover did. Uh, first a drogue chute will deploy and then the uh, engines on the sky crane will fire and it'll bring it down hopefully to a soft landing a few hundred kilometers away. Um, so the mods that I'm using are Flight Engineer just for uh, additional information and just display some rocket statistics which are pretty useful and of course the KOS uh, module here. Uh, for the rocket it's just a simple um, asparagus uh, style uh, two booster configuration um, nothing too fancy and um, yeah let's go ahead and run the script so just so you know this entire flight is going to be completely automated from the script uh, I won't be issuing any commands at all other than maybe a time warp uh, just to accelerate while it's coasting to apoapsis and back down to the reentry because that takes a few minutes. Other than that, uh, once I hit enter after running the script, that's going to be completely it. So f the first thing we need to do is switch to the archive. Not the archive, just archive. And I'll just go ahead and show you quickly what the script looks like. I'll have the uh, full script in the um, description so you can go ahead and follow along if you are so inclined. So um, but basically this is it. It's about three kilobytes. Um, yeah, that's what it looks like. And we'll go into detail, but if you do have any specific questions, feel free to ask, uh, leave a comment, and I'll go ahead and answer them as soon as I can. Um, yeah, so we'll just go ahead and run this. And that's it. It's doing everything completely automatically now. Uh, what I have, the first thing happening is uh, it's issuing a roll command uh, just for fun uh, at 200 meters, so the rocket's just rolling 90 degrees just for the heck of it. Uh, now you notice that the throttle is automatically throttling up and down and what I have it doing is following the most efficient uh, launch velocity. Uh, you can see here its atmospheric efficiency is hovering around 100% so that's good. So I have, I, I wrote in my script for it to do that kind of indirectly following an empirical formula on what the most efficient velocity is at a given altitude. So now the uh, boosters will automatically fire once they're starved of, starved of fuel and throttled up. And now it's doing the gravity turn. And what I have it doing is um, just pointing north. And the reason is uh, is because I want to be on a suborbital trajectory that lands me back on the ground. Um, 
So I just found the easiest way to do that is just to point north. There's a lot of land to the north of the KFC, so that's where it's going. So now it's just going to fire at full throttle until uh, it's completely starved of fuel, and that should take its apoapsis up to about 110, 115 kilometers. And it should do that for about another 35 seconds. And once it's uh, once the rocket's completely starved of fuel, it'll jettison the uh, the rocket. And um, I have these separatrons on the side that'll fire just to throw the rocket away, so there's no chance of it uh, colliding back with the payload. So once that's done, um, the payload's just going to coast um, up to apoapsis and then back down towards reentry. So there we go. So now it's coasting. So now the apoapsis is at 113 kilometers. Let's just see where that's going to take us. So it's going to take us here, uh, just to the edge of these hills. Probably by the time it actually gets there, these hills will move into place and the atmosphere will slow it down enough so it'll probably the uh, landing site's probably going to be around here. So that's cool. So this coast is going to take a few minutes. Uh, so I'm just going to time warp up and then down. Okay. So I have a program to uh, to turn uh, face retrograde at around, uh, I think I had it at 75 kilometers. So now it's just getting its heat shield into the correct orientation. This heat shield, by the way, doesn't really do anything at this point in time. It's just for show. I don't have uh, deadly reentry installed. Um, but eventually with KSP, I'm assuming we'll have uh, reentry heat, so a heat shield will be necessary. Alright, so it's just gonna keep falling up until 8 kilometers, at which point the drogue chute should deploy, and it'll unlock its steering, and it'll just kind of uh, freely dangle below the drogue chute uh, what the Curiosity rover team called the wrist mode, so it's just kind of spinning around by itself. So eventually I want to take this uh, probe to Duna, and I won't be doing a steeper re-entry there. I'll do a very shallow re-entry, or entry I should say, uh, to Duna. Um, so entry will take much longer, and the G-forces won't be nearly as high. So there we go. We have the uh, drogue chute deployed, and now you see the whole payload's freely wobbling about. So it's going to keep falling up until it's uh, 2,500 meters above the terrain, and then the drogue chute will fully deploy. And then a few hundred meters below that, I'll have the heat shield jettison. Okay, so we have drogue chutes fully deployed, and coming up, we'll have the heat shield jettison. Okay, so what's going to happen next is at about a thousand meters above the ground, um, the sky crane is going to detach from the drogue chute. It's going to deviate to the side by firing its engines, and then it's going to deviate back to kill its horizontal velocity. And this is so it doesn't smack back into the uh, parachute, or so that the parachute doesn't land back on top of it uh, once it's on the ground. 
After that, uh, it'll adjust its throttle so it's falling at around 30 meters per second, up until I think I have it set at 150 meters, and then it'll slow down to between 1 and 4 meters per second, and it'll constantly adjust its pitch and yaw uh, so that, I guess, pitch and roll um, to uh, correct for its horizontal velocity to try and null that. So that's coming up in about a hundred meters. Okay, here we go. It's falling. Now it's doing a deviation. Okay, now it's deviating to the side to kill its horizontal velocity. Okay, its horizontal velocity is killed. That's slowing down. 30 meters per second. Now it's adjusting it to between 12 and 18 meters per second. Okay. Now it's going to slow it down to between 4 and 1 meters per second. Hopefully it'll kill its horizontal velocity enough. Okay, the slope doesn't look too terrible it's going to land on. Okay, and about two and a half meters above the ground, it's gonna let go of the rover. There we go. Sky crane up. Now it's deviating away. And now I have the antennas automatically deployed a few seconds later. And sweet, no busted wheels. Excellent. So, yeah, that's that. That was. Can you see program ended? So, that was. 100% automated uh, using KOS. Um, as you can see, oh, that's the uh, sky crane crashing off into the distance. I think if we look up, there we go, we can see the drogue chute and uh, back shell coming down. So that'll land off a couple hundred meters away. We can go investigate that with the rover afterwards. But yeah, you can see uh, just with this very preliminary version of KOS, what can be done. Um, it's amazing just to think of the potential. Um, so hopefully in the future once there's uh, newer versions released I'll upload some more videos and show you what this thing can do. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.